Hey, it's Ashley, and I'm going to be doing the first chapter of the Marry My Husband web novel, um, and I'll be posting this in contingency, or not contingency, I'll be posting this um, uh, as often as I can uh, while still doing my reaction videos and reading my webtoon of My Seductive Wife. I uh, hope you enjoy, and if you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And here we go. Chapter 1. Two pairs of shoes at the front door. What a load of crap. Right up until the very end, a woman muttered. She lay in the corner of a six-person cancer ward, and she was in the midst of staring at her phone. Her call had already gone straight to voicemail four times, that last attempt being the fifth. Her sunken eyes stared at the cracked screen, then flicked up at the tiny date in its top right corner, April 10th. At worst, she had, been three, at worst, she had three months to live. Six at best, twelve, the doctor had said, if there was a miracle. These projections, all shorter than she'd hoped for, were an approximation of what was left of her life, and she hated them. They were too convenient, like the doctor had stared at three and multiplied up from there. Maybe he thought the possibility of more time would reassure her, even just a little. It hadn't. She knew she was sick knew she would die. The causes behind her illness were numerous. A poor diet, a lack of exercise, overwhelming stress, not to mention the soju she drank every night to ease herself of it. The main culprit though, the cause of all these causes, was her husband. The same husband who wasn't even answering his phone right now. It wasn't like she was calling him to nurse her nor was she trying to get in a final goodbye. She had no expectations for such things in the first place. All she wanted was for him to pay for her medical bills with her money that was in his possession, which might have also been the reason her husband had kept ignoring her messages for the last several days. She donned a lint-covered cardigan and left the hospital, pretending to be stepping out for a walk. The cherry blossoms which had bloomed while she fought alone against cancer, or rather, while the cancer cells mercilessly ate away at her from within, drifted down onto her head. It was already spring. Taxi! Luckily, she was able to flag down a taxi as soon as she reached the main street. Looks like I just used up the rest of whatever luck I had left. Pushing her disparaging thoughts aside, she clambered into the taxi and gave the driver directions to her destination. Oh dear, you must be very ill, miss, the taxi driver said while glancing at her through the rearview mirror. Maybe she realized a hat and thick glasses hadn't been the best choice of disguise when it came to hiding her shaved head. Plus, part of her hospital gown was sticking out from under the worn cardigan. She met the driver's eyes through the mirror and shrugged. I suppose so. Truth be told, it would be more strange for someone to look like this and not be sick. Ah, don't worry. You're going to feel better soon. Give it another 10 days or so, and I'm sure you'll be able to jump out of bed like it's nothing. Anyway, it's spring now, isn't it? It was a dialect that, would, that was hard to understand for people born and raised in Seoul. However... The woman was familiar with it, and she felt a sense of longing at the manner of speaking. A longing to return to her hometown, where she'd lived with her dad as a child. He'd been the kind of dad that would have done anything for her, and made her feel invincible. If I didn't leave Busan, then would I have been happy? The woman reminisced. It felt good, too, even if the past would remain just that. At the age of 19, a girl brimming with dreams was admitted to one of the best universities in Seoul. She thought it was only natural for her to live in a dorm or get her own apartment nearby, but the person she expected would be happiest for her, for her rejected the idea vehemently. Her father argued that he hadn't raised his only child all by himself just for her to head off to Seoul alone, where the people were cold and cruel. 
Absolutely not. You're going there? You're going where? Why don't you go to Busan University, huh? Dad, are you going to live my whole life for me? If you like Busan University so much, why don't you enroll there yourself? <laughs> Look at the way you're speaking. Did I raise you to speak that way? Whatever. I'm going to Seoul with or without your permission. The immature girl slammed the door to her room shut. For the first time, she resented her father for never having left Busan his entire life. She spent the entire night sobbing under the covers, but the next day, the girl's father carefully entered her room and sat on the bed. I put the house up for sale. Let's move to Seoul. The girl's father was a construction engineer. He was also a Busan native, the kind who had never once thought about leaving the city. The 19-year-old girl had no way of knowing how big a decision it was for him to sell the house he had received from his mother and blindly moved to Seoul. She was just excited at the thought of being able to attend the university of her dreams and jumped up and down, rubbing her cheek against her father's. You're that happy? In the woman's memories, her father laughed boisterously. Recalling his scent and his scratchy beard, the woman touched her dry lips. She must have looked quite pathetic because the taxi driver spoke to her through the rearview mirror again. Cheer up. There's that phase going round these days, isn't there? Today is a gift. It's the future that someone wished for before they died. Is that right? I'm such a fool that I can't remember. Was it the familiar Busan dialect? The yearning she thought she'd buried threatened to overflow again? I'll see him again soon. A bitter smile appeared on the woman's lips. Even if I die today, I don't think I'll be missing much of a future. Just because tomorrow comes doesn't mean good things will happen. Why not? You can always make them happen. As soon as he finished his sentence, he sped up and twisted between cars. It felt like the taxi was performing acrobatics. Then the car veered off the main road, entering a street the woman had never seen before. She gripped the handle above the window, flustered by both the erratic driving and what she assumed to be a wrong turn. Sir, this isn't the way. Just trust me. I'll take you right to your destination quickly. The taxi sped up again and made a series of seemingly random turns down the alleyways and side roads. Contrary to her growing anxiousness, they soon arrived in front of the woman's house. See? The path you, the path you know aren't everything there is. You can get here like this if you just use your head a little. Can't always be looking straight ahead, you know. The woman looked uh, looked for her wallet and pulled out a 10,000 10, won bill. Slightly speechless, the driver waved his hand and pushed the money back towards her. I drove you here on my way home anyway. Keep this and buy yourself some crackers, kiddo. Just think of it as pocket change from your dad, okay? <laughs> she wasn't a kiddo and certainly wasn't going to accept pocket money from a total stranger. The woman gasped. The woman grasped the driver's hand and forced the money into it. Still, I should pay since I received a ride. Then how about this, kiddo? The driver slowly folded the money twice. It'll all work out fine. You bet it will. You'll get back on your feet in no time and make a lot of money too. You'll even meet a man who is head over heels for you and marry him. This is my last ride for the day, so I won't take the money. Since you're my last customer, promise me you'll live well, that you'll be more That'll be more than enough for, of a payment. As a matter of fact, give me your hand. They were all things that would never happen. The doctor had made that clear today. And if that wasn't enough of a punch in the gut, she was seriously considering running away because she didn't even have the money to pay for her hospital bills. Despite this. Okay, I promise. The woman answered as if possessed and took the money. How nice would it be if all that came true, the driver lightly squeezed her hand in encouragement and let go. There's a car behind you. Careful when you get out. The car waiting behind them honked its horn. The woman hastily got out and the taxi sped off. She couldn't tell if the hand waving from its window was a goodbye towards her or an apology to the other driver. Once the taxi was finally out of the sight, the woman unfolded the money in her hand. The crinkled $10,000 wand bill had a crooked blue heart drawn in the corner. Laughter escaped her. 
Instead of folding it back inside her wallet, she placed it in her pocket. Thank you for leaving me with a beautiful memory in this shitty life. Jiwon Kang, 37 years old, her life was far from ordinary. When Jiwon was six, her mother ran away with all the family assets, save for the deed to the house. This forced her father to find a job and work hard to support the two of them. Because of this, it was her grandmother who raised her and who gripped Jiwon's hand tightly, even in her dying moments. Children her age bullied her for being unsophisticated and stiff compared to those raised by both their parents. However, Jiwon was able to grow into a respectable member of society thanks to her father, who always showed her with love no matter how busy he was. Who, sorry, who always showered her with love no matter how busy he was. And her late grandmother. Besides them was her one and only friend, Sumin Jiong. Her father passed away without being able to see Jiwon wear her cap and gown. Overcoming her sadness, Jiwon finished school and made it to her graduation ceremony, though she had nobody to come and see. But, every, but not everything was bad. She was able to get a good job at a reputable company, and it was there that she met Min Hwan Park. My name is Min Hwan Park. As you can see, I'm a section chief. He pointed at the employee card hanging by his chest and gave an easygoing smile. You're nervous being new and all, huh? If there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask me. Oh, and by the way, what's your number? It was the first time a man had asked for her number since a student representative back in university collected everyone's. Jiwon hushed her beating heart for acting so shamelessly and entered her number into the phone Minwon held out. There's no way he's interested in someone like me, especially not someone as good looking as him. He just asked me for my number since he, he's my higher up and we work together. She denied it as she always did, but the text messages that began arriving the next day formed little cracks in her firmed wall-like denial. Good morning, did you sleep well? I heard it's raining today, so make sure you take an umbrella. In the morning, he greeted her with good morning. Did you arrive home safely? I bet you're tired. You should wash up and get some rest, sweet dreams. And in the evening, he sent messages oozing with tender, com tender compassion. At some point, Jiwon began to look forward to his texts. She was always worrying over how to respond, writing and erasing messages over and over again. Good night, Mr. Park. Too stiff. Sweet dreams, Mr. Park. Too cringy. I saw you are working overtime. Aren't you tired? It sounds like I'm always watching him. In the end, Jiwon couldn't respond to any of his messages, or at least not until she sat next to Minwon at the first company dinner after the busy season was finished. Just drink half and put the glass down in front of me. Minwon subtly pushed, a, pushed side dishes in front of her and drank her drinks for her. Soon, Jiwon's face was just as red as Minwon's, though not because of the alcohol. Dinner felt like it took ages to end, and by the end of it, she wanted to hide herself out of the love-fueled embarrassment. Are you drunk? Minwan's question cut through the noisy crowd, making her heart thump. I'm fine. Thank you for taking care of me. That wasn't what I wanted to say. Jiwon, had, who had lived her entire life building walls around herself, despaired over, curt, over her curt response. If you're really thankful, do this one thing for me, Minwan whispered with a laugh. Go ahead. Can you please reply to my text? Just a simple yes is fine. After that, Jiwon and Minwan began dating. She had always had difficulty getting along with people, so this good-looking and kind man seemed like he was from an entirely different world from than her. The way he dropped everything and ran to his mother when she needed him was something Jiwon admired and envied. Then when Minwan proposed, she thought she was dreaming. Let's get married, Jiwon. You're the only person I want to spend the rest of my life with. The two successfully became married. Jiwon was on top of cloud nine. She was so happy she could even endure how her mother-in-law barged in every morning as soon as they returned from their honeymoon. She nagged Jiwon about preparing Minwan's breakfast, cleaning the house, and even throwing out their water purifier and boiling barley tea instead. I didn't like you as a daughter-in-law. 
grateful. I didn't take you in as a daughter-in-law because I like you. I only allowed it because you seemed like you would take good care of my son. But you put rice that was made yesterday on the breakfast table? Are you in your right mind? Your body doesn't have any issues, does it? Why don't you have a kid yet? What's with the state of the house? Are you acting high and mighty just because you earned some money? You can't even clean after you get home from work? Why are you still sleeping at this hour? Since it's the weekend, you should get up early and prepare invigorating foods for your husband. She let it all in through one ear and out the other. One day, when her frustration and rage felt like they were about to explode, she went to karaoke and sang her heart out. One day, though, she met her mother-in-law in front of the karaoke place. I knew it. You can't take care of your husband because you're selling yourself, aren't you? This is why I shouldn't have taken in someone with, without parents. Who knows how... Who knows what they died doing? For the first time, Jiwon lost her temper and argued back. She shouted right in the middle of the street, asking how her mother-in-law could say such a thing. After that, Minwon changed. No, he did more than that. He became a completely different person. I wouldn't have married you if I knew you were this kind of woman. After her mother-in-law came and cried aloud for the entire neighborhood to hear, Minwan immediately bellowed at Jiwan. I married you because I thought you were nice and frugal, but who could have known you've been treating my mother like this behind my back? The situation turned even worse. From, the, from that day on, Minwan always shouted at her, and her mother-in-law tortured mother-in-law's torture continued to grow more severe. To make matters worse, Minwan became addicted to trading stocks, something he'd started fiddling around with while they dated. On top of pulling all the money from their retirement funds, he took out loans and used the capital to day trade. In just a few days, he lost everything. This all happened within the first six months of their marriage. Jiwan began to live the sort of life where one hoped the next day would be better than the last. Tomorrow will be better. Next month. Next year. Things will improve. This futile hope turned into despair. Despair which caused her to let go of herself. Despair which fed the tumor that nourished inside her body. Or the tumor that flourished inside her body. It was too late when Jiwan finally regained her senses. All she had left was an untreated tumor in the deposit of an old apartment she barely managed to find after paying back loans and scraping together what she had. It was the very apartment Jiwan now stared blankly at after getting out of the taxi. She rode the musty-smelling elevator up to her floor and walked to the very last door in the hallway. She hadn't always lived such a sad life in a depressing place like this. Once upon a time, she and Minwan lived in a neat new apartment thanks to the money they earned from working diligently, plus whatever extra Minwan earned from messing around with stocks. She'd been happy then. That memory and others like it are all she that had sustained her over these last ten years. She kept telling herself that old Minwan would return, that he wasn't really a bad person. She always made up excuses for him too, saying that he could just control him. He just couldn't control himself because things weren't going well. That in reality, he felt frustrated and apologetic towards her. Their unit's rusted iron door didn't even have one of those common electronic locks. Jiwan tried turning the handle before putting in the key and heard a familiar click. It appeared Minwan hadn't locked the door properly again. Jiwan pulled the easily opened handle and quickly stepped in. At that moment, Jiwan's dull eyes suddenly turned cold. Next to a pair of brown men's shoes, messily tossed aside like they were always like they always were, sat two red stiletto heels. Both pairs were gifts Jiwan had purchased for people special to her. The brown shoes were for the man who was half of her world, Minwan Park. And the red heels? Oh my God! What are these? How can I wear these, Jiwan? You said you don't like thing. You don't like being short, didn't you? Hurry up and try them on. You're pretty, so everything looks good on you. Those she'd given to her other half, her best friend and only friend in the entire world, Suman. Man. That is the end of chapter one of the Marry My Husband web novel. It's 
I like that we get a little bit more details um, than in the... Well, we get more of what's going on in Jiwon's mind. Um, since it's a novel, they can... We get that part of it. I'm happy that she actually said something to her mother-in-law because in the, the it didn't get depicted in the drama. It just looks like she just took it all. But after a while, of course, being emotionally abused, you just you just you really do just start to take it. But um, this is really good. I'm excited because I was missing the drama, but I wanted to enjoy it a different way. And I think this will quench that for me. Again, if you like the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.